What's going on, everyone? This is Jacob Shu filling in for Tom O'Brien yet again. I hope you all are having a great day so far. Let's take a look at what we got going on in the market. Start everything off. We're looking at the composite about 0.2%. Try to get 17,946. Dow Jones Industrial up about 0.14%. Trade at 42,216. We have the dollar, DXY, up about 101.68, up about 0.46%. So we're seeing crude move up a little bit. We're seeing rates go up a little bit in the 10 year bond, off from a low of the 3.69 we're seeing uh, last week. You have the dollar getting kind of strong right here, too. You know, a lot of stuff, you had some numbers come out um, that showed the labor market was a little bit more resilient. Uh, we're waiting for the farm payrolls, you know. If it seems like this market, the labor market in particular, is a little bit more resilient than people were anticipating, um, you're not going to get a massive, or at least the idea of another 50 basis point uh, rate cut by the end of the year isn't necessarily as pressing as it is if you have some, some issues in the job market, which a lot of this kind of fear uh, was based off of. You see some nice movement right up to the upside there, that 101.68 market is holding okay considering uh, crude oil. Up about 0.87%, 70.44. Okay, of course, you have a lot of stuff going on right now. Um, Israel is clashing with Hezbollah forces. Um, I'm not sure if any massive uh, campaign took place yet against Iran. Uh, there's obviously some fear around that. However, there is uh, enough oil and stockpiles right now. Production is good enough. You also have the Saudi minister coming out and saying something a little bit interesting. Okay, so he warns $50 oil as OPEC, OPEC plus members flout production curbs. So take a look at this a little bit. The Saudi oil minister has said prices could drop to as low as $50 a barrel uh, if so-called cheaters with an OPEC plus don't stick to an agreed upon production limits, according to delegates in the cartel. The remarks are interpreted by other producers as a failed threat from the kingdom that is willing to launch a price war to keep its market share of other countries, excuse me, if other countries don't abide by the group's agreements, Benchmark oil prices rose Wednesday with the most actively traded contract, Brent, up about 1.9%, trading up about 0.94% right now, just under 75. We're trading at 74.25. There are fears in the West that a wider war could choke oil exports from the Gulf that passed through the Strait of Hormuz. You know, it seems like nothing ever really happens on this end. Of course, um, you, you know, restrained ground campaigns uh, into Lebanon is kind of insane, I would say. Not insane, it's just kind of, it's crazy, like a lot's going on, right? There's escalation, stuff like that. If Iran feels that it's necessary for them to kind of flex their muscle more than they have, uh, you know, with the recent attacks, you, you could see some pretty intense escalation. Um, I know there seems to be at least intense conversation coming from the Israeli side regarding Iran's activities in it. And of course, this is definitely some of the fiercest conflict we see in that region uh, for quite a while, at least the most sustained over a long term. Looking at the E-mini kind of sideways right now, trading 5,765. That gold contract off slightly, but not moving too much, trading at 2,676. Copper up about 1.5%, $4.65 on that contract. And that's silver as well, doing okay today at 3204 and then that Russell is uh, completely sideways right now. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about Celsius today, uh, but I do want to look at Tesla. So let's pull this up. Of course, we we're talking about that they had earnings reported uh, yesterday after the bell. They kind of missed some estimates off about 3.4% today. So they announced third quarter deliveries on Wednesday that slightly missed, excuse me, deliveries uh, slightly missed expectations, sending the stock down about 5% early trading. We're off about 3.4% right now. The EV maker delivered 462,890 vehicles in the three months ending in September 30th. That's up 6.4% quarter over quarter to mark the first quarter delivery growth this year. Numbers also came in ahead of uh, 435,000 EVs company delivered in the year ago uh, prior. However, Wall Street did uh, want, you know, they were off basically uh, about seven on it. So you're kind of selling off a little bit. Uh, they have the robo taxi coming out. That's on going to be October 8th or at least, excuse me, October 10th. That's going to be an event they're having. Uh, and then, of course, this is somewhat positive. Uh, the news is coming from China as well, because at least they have a foothold. And they're really situated pretty well as far as American EV companies are concerned, uh, because they do have such a good uh, foothold in China. You're seeing companies like Neo and Li Auto 
a blow up on this kind of news as well. Um, on the broader scale, at least for American consumers, and I'm looking a little bit at Rivian at this perspective here, uh, Tesla gets affected as well, but they at least have exposure in China. Uh, so that's up 1.97% today, but of course we're moving back down. We really were testing that level right there of $10. Um, we'll see if we can come back off of it. If we break through it, then we're going to the lows on that. Uh, this is from Edmunds. Okay, this is a little bit interesting. So they have unrelenting auto financing conditions. This is quote unrelenting. Squeeze new vehicle buyers in Q3 2024. That's um, according to Edmunds. So what's happening with this? Interest rates are sitting at near record highs. The average new vehicle APR in Q3 24 remained elevated at 7.1%. The same as Q2 in 24. This marks the sixth consecutive quarter that new vehicle APRs hovered above 7%. 0% finance deals remain nearly impossible to find or qualify for. Consumers continue to sign up for longer loan terms in order to stomach higher prices. So 69% of new vehicle loans had terms over 60 months. In Q3-24, similar to the share of 70% in Q2 and Q1 as well. 84-month auto loans are on the rise, accounting for 18.1%. New vehicle shoppers are taking on 1,000-plus monthly payments at near record levels, which is absurd. And the majority of car shoppers are holding off on purchasing the vehicle because of high interest rates. That is obviously, I think to some extent, probably won't affect Rivian in a major way uh, as the people who are probably getting squeezed or lower income and Rivian um, consumers tend to be higher income, but it's still going to have uh, some kind of impact as well. Of course, you know, everything on the Chinese side is completely different uh, with Lee and Neo uh, doing quite well, especially because some of the barriers uh, to entry to get EVs are getting lowered there. Uh, the Chinese government's hoping to stimulate uh, their economy uh, a little bit. Stellantis also getting completely rocked here. We'll pull this up right now. Yeah, off about 0.55%. Of course, a few days ago, you had this massive gap down from that 6 level area at about 1361. It hasn't really recovered uh, much then. Supported another quarter of plunging sales. The company behind brands such as Jeep, it, it, Jeep has its own issues for sure. Um, but it has a so-called disaster on their hands. The automakers sold 305,000 vehicles, which is a 20% decline compared with a year earlier. That follows the second quarter marked by a similar 21% year-over-year decline. And uh, yeah, Ram, Alfa Romeo, Jeep, Fiat. All these have some kind of bad qualities associated with them. Folks, stay right there. We'll be right back. If you spend any time online researching